my name is Deborah Richards and I'm a music journalist and broadcaster based in the UK. You're listening to the podcast Rebel Spirits, offering a unique insight into the innovative and progressive talents of Polish jazz. Season two interviews the talented mavericks that have been emerging over the last 20 years. And today on the show is Wrocław Zimpel. At the heart of a rebel spirit is an open mind. And it's this openness that puts an artist like Wrocław Zimpel in a vulnerable place that encourages the development of a musical intelligence that is not only intellectual, but also spiritual. Vatswav has really dived into music of the world, as he puts it, to deepen his experience of sound and rhythm and to use his compositions to express something that is primal, at the core of what it is to be human. Vatswav may have started his music practice playing classical violin as a child, but he moved on to clarinet and saxophone, taught himself to improvise and at some point in his studies, knew that he wanted to move toward free jazz. He is a constantly evolving soul, and his visits to India to embrace Konakol and Carnatic music that evolved from ancient Hindu texts and traditions impacted not only his understanding of rhythm, but led him toward recognizing how trance can affect the listener physically and emotionally. Trance is key to his work. He has built an extensive collection of instruments that have informed his music. The harmonium from North India, a Tibetan horn, and the Fiara flute from Slovakia, to name a few. In this interview, you will hear about his relationship with the beloved ARP 2500, a modular synthesizer that began its life in the 1970s, that he was able to meet if I can put it like that, during a residency at the William Twee Studios in Den Bosch in the Netherlands. Projects such as his Undivided Trio and bands Emergency, The Light and Hera have given Vatswav the space to explore the emotional power of jazz and improvisation. Whilst his work with the Chicago-based saxophonist Ken Vandermark's band Resonance and an invitation to perform at the city's innovative Umbrella Music Festival have played a part in extending his audience reach, an important factor for European musicians. More recently, he has composed music for the Polish film Silent Night. And as he states in the interview, his view of himself now is as a music producer who moves forward at every opportunity. Zimpel is a thrilling presence within the most potent music of today. Coming up on Rebel Spirits. My name is Václav Zimpel. I play clarinet and all sorts of different wind and other instruments. And since a couple of years, I consider myself more as a producer than instrumentalist. Maybe from outside it might look like big jumps, like, okay, this guy was studying classical clarinet and right now is electronic music producer but uh, there's a lot of stuff in between and those changes are like constant it happens every day every day i want to, to do something new which i haven't done yesterday and from one week to another you cannot feel the difference but after three years you realize that you're somewhere completely else than than it was before so yeah, I started with classical music, typical, you know, classical music education. I started with violin when I was six, the whole elementary school, I was playing violin. And meanwhile, I started playing also guitar, mouth harmonica. I discovered blues and improvisation through, through mouth harmonica. And I decided to switch from violin to clarinet. And I was studying classical music on clarinet and parallel I was teaching myself to improvise from records. I started also playing saxophone at the time. Then I, I started 
a music academy, music university, studying classical clarinet. I had this big ambition to become a classical clarinetist, but once I finished studies, I had my master degree, I never looked back, I never came back to, to classical music again. I was playing different forms of improvised music, jazz, free jazz, later on absorbing different traditional music from different parts of the world, mostly from India. I started going a lot to India, studying uh, Indian classical music, mostly Carnatic music from South India. And there's where, where I learned what rhythm is, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I learned how to connect it with your body and feel the uh, even very, very complex rhythms in, uh, in the body through their practice of konakal, which is rhythm language. And uh, I also played with Japanese musicians, with Moroccan Gnawa musician Malem Mokhtar Ganya. Yeah, and many, many other musicians from different cultures. And uh, everywhere where I went, I was looking for trance. Trance music creates this kind of space which surrounds you in a way your mind starts working in a different way. I would say that trance is most important aspect in music for me. This is something which makes me feel like I want to make music and I want to listen to music. That's what carries me. And I always thought that music which influence listener in the way they change their consciousness for better is music which I want to do. And you can find trance in all the musical cultures, in folk traditions, in classical traditions, and obviously in electronic music. I composed massive oscillations during a residency in Will and Tway Studios in Den Bosch in the Netherlands. This is really very, very unique place in terms of electronic music. There is two main studios in Will and Tway. One of the studios is uh, concentrated on instruments, mostly from 70s and, and from 80s. The most iconic instruments they have there uh, is ARP 2500. They have uh, also some tape recorders, a lot of other synths and other musical, musical equipment. And there's another room with even older instruments. And this is like out of this world kind of thing because they have sound generators from 50s very old uh, oscillators. Some equipments which were originally used in biological labs, but later on musicians found out that they can actually work with them as sound sources. So a lot of crazy, crazy stuff. They have also some analog computers, a lot of tape recorders, nice uh, old mixing desks. When you listen to old music concrete like Pierre Schaeffer or Karlheinz Stockhausen, this very early electronic music, you can actually hear exactly the same instruments which they own in Will and Tway Studios. This is like really unique experience to really be able to work on those instruments which are in great condition. So it was so overwhelming, like the, you know, the sonic wealth you are surrounded with. Massive Oscillations, the title track is played entirely on ARP 2500. This is synthesizer from early 70s. When you think about the character of 70s, ARP 2500 is kind of embodiment of what 70s are <laughs> to me. Yeah, it's huge and it's very beautiful. It's brown, it has a lot of very subtle pastel-like colors, like really beautiful. At the time, it was kind of my beginnings with electronic music production. So it was a very intuitive process for me. So I cannot tell exactly what I was doing while working on the massive oscillations. I basically was turning a lot of knobs and following my ear and trying to remember what knob does what in terms of sonic possibilities. Actually, when I started working on this piece, Hans Kulk uh, from Will and Tway Studio, who was my guide there, explained me very well ARP 2500. We were talking like for one or two hours about the possibilities, connections, what I can do with this and that. 
and I spent next couple of hours preparing the proper patch. And I ended like late in the night and I turned off the synthesizer. And I was really happy that I found something interesting. And I came back next morning and turned on ARP again. And it didn't sound at all like what I did the day before. It was like something completely different. So I started, you know, turning knobs again, looking for something. And I totally couldn't find stuff which I created the day before. And later on, I got to know from the guys from the studio that I shouldn't have turned it off because when you turn it off, all the circuits get called and to get exactly the same sound, you have to have it turned on like for two hours or something like this. So, so basically it, it was impossible for me to come back to the original settings, but I recorded a little bit of the stuff which I was working on and it was something like this. So this is, this is stuff which I started working on and I couldn't fight at all these sounds on the next day. So I started, you know, turning knobs again, back and forth. And I found this. So this is how Massive Oscillation starts. This is the first thing I've created, this kind of shunting Tibetan monks kind of thing. That's how, how it sounds to me. And uh, this is sort of a heart of, uh, I mean, one of the hearts of the piece. Maybe this piece has few hearts. That's how it started. And there are also different, uh, different layers which are constantly changing and they're creating kind of ambience of the piece, a kind of softness uh, in the mid and high range. But uh, what actually makes this piece going is kind of tremolo effect on a drone and it sounds like this. So it is also constantly changing and there's a lot of manipulation on those rhythms. I was using different kind of filters, playing them rhythmically. And that's what, what gives this kind of constant bounce movement. Basically, the idea of the piece is like very simple. There's one ostinato, rhythmic ostinato, which is constantly changing, like there are some little changes. It's kind of, you know, like watching micro world through microscope sort of thing. When you go from the, from the distance, there's like ta 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 all the time. But actually there's a lot of stuff going on uh, all the time. There's no equal note in this rhythm structure. Everything is a little bit different. And that's what I hope <laughs> makes it feel more organic. But basically these are four stems which makes this piece as a whole. And at some point I'm adding kind of holding alto clarinet. Originally, how you can see there is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there's six clarinets. When I recorded massive oscillations, it was too complex for me at that point to mix it myself. And yeah, I asked James Holdens for help with mixing. And yeah, he's like kind of genius mixer. So it was a really amazing process. I basically made kind of rough mixes myself and sent him all the stems from the studio. And, and he was mi mixing it in his studio and we were basically, you know, sending back and forth the material. 
I heard this sentence that art of mixing is being able to sacrifice your children. <laughs> I totally understand it because, for example, here I have 29 tracks and human ear is, is not capable to really distinguish all those 29 tracks. And what you have to do while mixing is to decide what is more important than the other. And James helped me to make those decisions. He really added a lot of magic to, to what I did before and made all the details audible. Yeah. I started working in electronic music field in 2015, 16. So comparing to my whole musical life, it's kind of new thing still for me. But I came to electronic music through techno and uh, trance experience. Techno, like this really wide term, kind of like jazz. You, you cannot say that you like jazz or dislike jazz. It's kind of same with techno. Like this is so wide and so many different activities were labeled by those names. This is kind of difficult to say exactly what it is. But to me, all this techno music, which has kind of uh, organic qualities into it is most interesting. My goal is to make music which basically can be felt or understood by anyone. I want to make music which goes straight to to emotions, to, to body, and not necessarily to, to the intellect. I want to make music which kind of cuts out the intellect. This is my ambition. And that's what I call universal music, which basically, as I said before, can be understood by anyone. But I also understand that this is kind of illusion <laughs> because uh, at the same time, stuff which I'm doing is kind of underground and I am aware of this, but, but in general, I want to make music for people. You know what I mean? I want to make people feel better. My name is Václav Zimpel, and this is Massive Oscillation.
This episode of Rebel Spirits was hosted by me, Deborah Richards, and produced by Monika Proba, Wojciech Olekszek, and Magdalena Stampien. The podcast was brought to you by the Adam Minskiewicz Institute. If you'd like to listen to more music from today's featured artist, please see the show notes for this episode or go to culture.pl forward slash rebel spirits. Please do subscribe to Rebel Spirits wherever you get your podcasts and you can promote the show by sharing it. It's been such a pleasure and I look forward to being with you again.